Hello creative people! I feel a little sad because this is the last episode of the Deciphering Creativity serial, but also very happy about the positive feedback I have received from you so far. For those who have by some chance just tuned into the podcast, my name is Peja and I'm your host in the Deciphering Creativity serial aimed at debunking the myth about creativity and finding ways to better and more creative thinking. In the previous podcast episodes I explained the process of creative thinking. I tried my best to convince you that you are creative. I shared with you the top four creative thinking skills and a few creative thinking techniques. Today's episode is about thinking habits typical of successful creative thinkers. Habits very much determine who we are, so why not develop some creative ones and have a more exciting and fulfilling life? Let's dive into the final episode of Deciphering Creativity serial called Creative Thinking Habits. Habit is defined as an acquired behavior pattern, regularly followed until it has become almost involuntary. Different habits influence our everyday reality. Some of them have the power to make our life truly miserable and others can make it really great. There are positive habits that can help you become a healthier individual or a more successful business person and there are those that have the power to transform your current thinking into a more creative one. In today's episode, I'm going to focus on the five habits that I find most useful for creative thinking and thinking in general. To become a better creator, you should create every day, learn something new every day, be active every day, journal every day, and drink water every day. So I I will repeat once again. So to be a better creator, you should Create every day, learn something new every day, be active every day, journal every day and drink water every day. Some of these habits may seem challenging to practice, some may appear trivial, but believe it or not, they all contribute to your brain's ability to function properly and create great things. An activity can become a habit only if it is regularly repeated, so I suggest that you practice them every day. I understand that it is not always easy to maintain the continuum as we all have to struggle with the daily tasks, but some of these activities are easy to practice and there is really no excuse for not doing them. Those that take more time and effort you should try to practice on a regular basis. In time, these activities will become a normal part of your everyday life and you will learn to enjoy them for the benefit of your creativity. So the first habit that I want to point out is the habit of creating every day. The human brain has a tendency to simplify things and look for the fastest and easiest solution possible. When faced with a problem, we look for the quickest and the most logical way to approach it. While this is perfectly okay when solving mundane tasks like which underground line should I take to get from point A to point B, this automatic mechanism can fail when looking for creative solutions to problems. Creative thinking is based on the ability to use associative or lateral thinking, the types of thinking that utilize associations to fuse seemingly unrelated information into new ideas. Each new idea results in one or several new neural connections that are formed in your brain. A mentally active brain is used to regularly making new neural connections. A healthy, properly wired brain can process information better and faster than a lazy brain and it does it more creatively. The creative brain works like a steam engine locomotive machine. To get the machine moving, first you need to load it with enough coal to keep it operating during an extended period. 
Then you need to produce a lot of energy to heat the water and get the pistons moving. Suddenly the massive machine starts to jolt. It is huffing and puffing through the chimney. Then it starts to move, slowly at first, but as it achieves the momentum, it gradually speeds until it begins to almost effortlessly slide for miles and miles along the rails. Your brain is like a locomotive machine. Different information coming from your life experience and everything you have so far learned are the coal and steam that fuel the engine. At first, the creative process may seem complicated. You sweat and you huff and puff while battling with the information until you produce the first ideas. If you stay persistent over a long period, your creative machine will at some point reach its momentum and you will be able to create more ideas with less effort and more joy. Keep your creative engine burning and you will never run out of ideas. Follow the example of creative masters. Georg Philipp Telemann was a German Baroque composer and multi-instrumentalist, almost completely self-taught in music. During his lifetime he produced about 3000 compositions. Duke Ellington, an American composer, pianist and leader of a jazz orchestra, recorded 153 studio albums and 496 compilations. Pablo Picasso of Spain produced about 100,000 prints and engravings. Please mark that not each of these works deserves to be played in the concert or displayed in the museum. Practice will make your work perfect. As the quantity of your work grows, the quality will follow. The more work you produce, the more you will be able to select from to represent you. Learn something new every day. Learning keeps the brain fit. Learning creates new neural connections and that is why it is essential that you keep learning new things throughout your entire life if you want to have a healthy and fully functional brain. The typical human brain can hold about 7 pieces of new information for less than 30 seconds. To be able to learn new things, you need to re-expose yourself to the information several times. At first, new information is stored in the hippocampus area of your brain, which is um, the thin outer layer of the brain. When processing new information, neurons from the hippocampus shoot electrical impulses towards the neurons in the deeper layers of the brain. Every time the brain is re-exposed to the same information, additional electrical discharges are shot. During these interactions, neurons in the brain get closer to one another and at some point in time their branches join and the memory about the new information is stored in the deeper layer of the brain, in the cortex. To be able to learn new things, you need to deliberately re-expose yourself to the information more elaborately and in fixed spaced intervals if you want the retrieval to be as vivid as possible. When I say more elaborately, it means that you must understand the information and, if possible, absorb it using multiple senses. That is why it is beneficial to use pictures, diagrams, highlighters, to make notes by writing down information by hand or, or draw your own symbols and doodles that will help you visually depict or interpret the information. Watch educational videos and incorporate auditory experience to your learning and you will increase your chance of memorizing new things. The most important benefit of learning is that it fosters curiosity. Curiosity is absolutely the most important of all personal traits for the creativity. Curiosity is what drives people to question things around them, to explore and look for alternatives. When you learn, you do not only gather knowledge and skills, you also form the basis for expanding your personal views and this will make your thinking rich in thoughts and ideas. When you finally add intuition to the accumulated knowledge and, and life experience, you will acquire a wisdom and together with it the potential for a life full of creativity. 
Another habit is the habit of being active every single day. Let me take you for a moment on a journey to the past, some 3 million years ago. We will visit Africa, our mother continent, that was at that time covered with lush forests. Different kinds of early hominids inhabited its trees until a tiny mutation happened and completely changed the evolution of the entire species. This particular mutation allowed certain members of the species to walk upright on two legs. In time, climatic changes gradually made African forests more seasonal, and this by chance acquired the quality, allowed our early ancestors to look for food both in trees and on the ground. A few million years later, some 1.89 million years ago, Homo erectus emerged as the first completely bipedal hominid. Walking on two legs allowed hominids to preserve energy that was then used to develop prefrontal cortex, part of the brain unique to humans. The prefrontal cortex is located just behind the forehead and is specialized for solving problems, maintaining attention and inhibiting emotional impulses. In short, this region controls many of the behaviors that separate us from other animals and teenagers as well, because the human brain together with the prefrontal cortex is usually developed until the early 20s. In the early stages of our evolution, our ancestors had to walk in search for food. It is estimated that males may have walked and run 10 to 20 kilometers a day, and females half of it. During those long walks, their brain was processing large amounts of information. They were at the same time looking for food, but also being vigilant about not becoming food to other animals. They used spatial orientation to find their way through the landscape they inhabited. They started to develop complex interpersonal relationships, which allowed them to work and live in groups. They became creative and developed first tools. Their efforts to survive resulted in developing the most complex and the most unique of all organs, the human brain. Homo sapiens, as a species, has in the meantime been reduced to working in factories and offices for the last 150 years or so, which is nothing compared to the millions of years of our biological existence and our life in the wild. Modern humans are not made for a sedentary life. In fact, the sedentary lifestyle is responsible for the majority of illnesses, both physical and mental. If you are listening to this episode while exercising, kudos to you! Now seriously, research shows that exercisers outperform couch potatoes in tests that measure long-term memory, reasoning, attention, and problem-solving skills. The same is true of fluid intelligence tasks, which test the ability to reason quickly, think abstractly, and improvise of previously learned material to solve a new problem. A healthy brain is vital for a healthy life. If you participate in physical activity, your lifetime risk for general dementia is cut in half, and that of getting Alzheimer can become lower than 60%. To stay healthy, you need to go outside and move. Practice regularly some sport, or if you do not consider yourself a sporty type, go dancing. The minimum amount of exercise that you should do is at least a 30-minute walk every day. Come on, admit that it is not that much. Take the opportunity to walk whenever you can. Get off the train a few stations earlier and finish your journey home from work on foot. If you like pets, adopt a dog and you will have a friend who will always be eager to accompany you on your walks. The next habit is the habit of journaling every day. It may sound a bit odd, but journaling is probably the best way to connect with your creative you. It is easy, though it may seem complicated at first, especially if you do not consider yourself a writer. It can be done everywhere, and all you need is a notebook and pencil. Journaling allows you to sort out and define your thoughts. 
by writing them down on paper, you give them a physical shape, you materialize them. Once they enter your physical world, you can regard them and decide whether to dismiss them or accept them and see where they will take you. Whenever you are in two minds about something, putting your thoughts on the paper will help you elaborate the problem and reach the right decision. If you are bothered or having negative feelings about something, putting your thoughts and worries down on paper will relieve the tension you are feeling and help you feel better. Journaling can help you fight negative and limiting thoughts that may perplex you while creating. Creative people are always worried whether their work is good enough, and this self-criticism often prevents them from being creative. Journaling is the perfect weapon to kill the sensor inside you, because it allows you to spill all your ideas on the paper without having to worry about whether someone will like or dislike them. The initial and probably the hardest step in the journaling process is to open your heart and lay your thoughts and emotions down on a paper. Once you get used to writing about everything that preoccupies you, you will start to connect with the writer. You will begin to understand better yourself as a person and as a creator. Flipping through the pages of your journal, you may realize that some of the thoughts and ideas that you had were actually quite creative. There are a few important things you need to pay attention to in case you are considering starting a journal. Keeping a journal does not require having the writing skills. It is a personal journal, not a novel. So even if you are not a wordsmith, you are still perfectly able to keep a journal. A journal need not always consist of words. You can also use drawings and pictures to illustrate your thoughts and emotions. Always use pen and paper. Digital apps and, and computer files do not have the power that pen and paper have. You see, moving your hand holding a pen across the paper surface is a, a kind of, of meditation. No matter how fast you write, the speed of your hand will never match the speed of your thoughts. Writing words and sentences on the paper will force your running thoughts to slow down and mold jumbled emotions and information into a sensible and readable form. You will have to compose a sentence inside your head just before writing it down because the paper does not offer a, a, a backspace or delete option. After a period of regular journaling, your thinking will become more accurate. And once you get used to it, the process of writing will take different forms. It can become a tool to analyze and understand people and events around you, a vision board for your future goals, a self-help therapy session and a way to discover the deepest layers of your mind and reach to your subconsciousness, a place where new realizations and new ideas lurk. Drink water every day. The brain is 80% water. When we lose body fluids through sweat, our cells borrow water from brain, causing the cells in the brain to wither and shrink. As the brain shrinks, it pulls away from the skull, putting stress on the area around it, giving us a dehydration headache. Even as little as 1.1% of water loss can cause cognitive impairment in the brain and 2% of water loss results in a headache, loss of attention, impaired short-term memory and long-term memory recall, low arithmetic and problem-solving performance. A team of scientists in the UK found that 90 minutes of sweating without replenishing lost fluids shrinks the brain as much as a year of aging. It also causes withering equivalent to two and a half months of Alzheimer's disease. We live a busy life and we often forget to drink water and get dehydrated over long periods. We get dehydrated when not drinking enough water after workouts, or from drinking too much tea and coffee, or when substituting other beverages for water. Chronic dehydration not only impairs cognitive performance, but can lead to a whole host of other problems including constant headaches, fatigue, weight gain, 
digestive problems, kidney stones, depression, and cancer of the bladder, prostate, and kidney. How much water should I drink, you may ask? It depends on your daily activities, whether you are sitting eight hours in the office, doing physical work or exercising. Outside temperature will also influence your daily intake. Children need more water than adults. An infant's total body water is about 70%. It's about 65% in children and 60% in adults. Older people may have developed impaired ability to sense thirst, so they also need to pay attention to hydration. Scientists have measured that an average adult male needs 3.7 liters of water daily and a female 2.7 liters. This, this sounds scary, but do not worry. The numbers include water from the food that you consume. In fact, you should take about 2 liters of water every day. If you drink a glass of water as soon as you wake up, before and after each meal, after every cup of coffee and after each high-intensity physical or mental activity, you should be safe with your daily intake. I always keep a bottle on my writing desk as a reminder to drink water, and I suggest you do the same. It works. Okay, creative people, do not forget to create, learn, be active, journal and drink water every day. And above all, do not forget to enjoy your creative life. To help you acquire new skills, I have prepared a document containing a list of practices together with some useful advice that you can follow and make the process of creating new habits more enjoyable. The download link is in this episode's description. That would be all from the Deciphering Creativity Serial. If you liked this and the previous episodes, please subscribe to New Creative You podcast. Like, comment and share it with your creative friends. In the following days I will be recording new podcast shows, but in the meantime, until I put them online, I suggest you visit my blog at newcreativeview.com and discover some interesting topics there. There you will also find links to my social media profiles, so you can follow me and stay up to date with what is going on with the New Creative View project. I have one final request for you. Please, please, stay healthy and clean.